Different versions of a gene are called alleles. We inherit two alleles for each gene, one from each parent, and these alleles shape our traits. And we're often taught that traits are either dominant or recessive, but these terms can easily break down and sort of fall apart. For example, we all have a gene called HBB. One version or allele of this gene is called HBS, and it can cause three different traits. Sickle cell disease, which is recessive, resistance to malaria infection, which is dominant, and beta globin protein type, which is codominant. So HBS is one allele, and it causes three traits with three different inheritance patterns. What's going on here? What this example shows is that an inheritance pattern doesn't come down to one allele physically dominating another one. It's just a pattern, and it has to do with the trait you're looking at. Recessive is just a quick way to say it takes two copies of a certain allele to make this trait. And dominant means it takes one copy to make some other trait, no matter what the other allele is. Codominant means you can see the effects of both alleles in a trait. That's it. These terms say nothing about how the traits are built. To understand that, it's better to set those terms aside and dig into the proteins that the alleles code for. That's because proteins are made from both alleles that a person has, and the proteins work together to build traits. In this case, the HBB gene codes for a protein called beta globin. Beta globin is made inside red blood cells and helps them carry oxygen. The HBS allele also codes for beta globin, but it's a little different. We'll call it S protein. When someone has two HBS alleles, all the beta globin they make is the S type. It still carries oxygen, but the proteins stick together and make long fibers. These fibers make the red blood cells long and pointy, like a sickle blade. These weird cells get stuck in small blood vessels, causing clogs. This damages tissues and organs, and it's very painful. These are symptoms of sickle cell disease, and they stem directly from the S protein. But the S protein isn't all bad. It also causes the second trait, malaria resistance. Malaria is an infection caused by a parasite that's carried by mosquitoes. A bite from an infected mosquito puts the parasite into a person's bloodstream. The parasite actually reproduces inside red blood cells, and the S protein interferes with this process. It makes it harder for the malaria parasite to establish a serious infection. In fact, this is true even when a person just has one copy of the HBS allele, and only some of their beta globin is the S type. That's why malaria resistance is dominant. It just takes one HBS allele for a person to have this trait. Now the last trait, beta globin protein type. Someone with one of each of these alleles makes both types of protein, regular beta globin and S protein. Since the effects of both alleles are visible, protein type as a trait is co-dominant. And importantly, this person does not have sickle cell disease. That's because when there's regular HBB protein in the mix, it's harder for the S proteins to stick together. They can make fibers, but they're shorter and they usually don't cause damage. It takes two HBS alleles to cause disease symptoms, which explains why the sickle cell trait is recessive. So the terms dominant and recessive can help describe how some traits are inherited, but only if they're caused mainly by a single gene. But another reason to set these terms aside is that most traits don't even work this way. To build most traits, it takes multiple genes working together, plus factors from the environment. By looking at what is actually causing a trait at the protein level, we can gain a deeper understanding about how all kinds of traits work.